Hola a todos. Welcome once again. Now we're talking about shiny, happy people not holding hands. And this is about an article that is called, or yeah, it's an article that is called, uh, what is the name? Oh yeah, Get Back in Line with God. Fundamentalist Christian YouTubers furious with dog art documentary, Shiny Happy People. You can find the description, you can find the link in the description, and you can go on your own to dailydot.com in order to read and understand this. The only thing I will say about this is be careful with what you see on YouTube. Yes, I know, we are on a YouTube channel and I'm a VTuber, but not everybody has good intentions as we do. And apparently these Christians are the perfect example of why we have to be so careful with what we watch on YouTube. But Cynthia, I'm sure that you have a lot to say about this because apparently you know who, who these people are and the show that, that we're going to be talking about. Oh my God, the Duggars. <laughs> they are an interesting bunch. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware. Um, Tay, I'm not sure if like if you have access to a network called TLC. They dubbed themselves the learning channel but i don't really know Definitely how much don't. you learn from the tlc to be honest with you yeah for what i had to google i'm sure you are not going to learn much i no. mean everything <laughs> if you check my notes you will see how i was cringing at all the things that we that i had to that i saw that they talk about so ugh. Nope. yeah <laughs> Luckily, yeah, the, we don't get here. yeah aaron are you a are you a regular con um content consumer of tlc I am not. I do not have a cable subscription. Okay. Well, you know, maybe that saves all of us because <laughs> I want to say like the Duggar, um, the Duggar's um, doc, not documentary, but their reality show started off as 17 kids and counting. And then you had 18 kids and counting. And then you had 19 kids and counting. And then you have some spinoffs here and there. And, you know, basically this is a, um, a family um, that is led by Jim, Bob, and Michelle. Yes, you heard right. Not Jim one, Bob. but two first names, Jim, Bob, and Michelle, who were part of the IBLP, which is an organization that promotes Christian values, also promotes having lots of children so that eventually you can teach these children how to take over the world and also be able to teach their Christian values to other people. They also have their own curriculum when it comes to homeschooling. Yes, people, these are the um, ideas uh, behind uh, Betsy Dubois, uh, DeVos when she wanted to bring more money into charter schools that were Christian uh, led and, and, and pretty fundy, pretty fundy. Um, and also even like promote and, and actually fund like homeschooling, which teaches no one anything. They even had like a portion on 19 kids and counting or 18 kids or when they were at 17, but they were, it was a bunch of kids that were even going to um, the Creation Museum. The creationist museum i believe that's uh ham is that ham kim ham i believe it's, yeah yeah, yeah they were doing a field trip were there where i guess like jesus god and dinosaurs all dying together as one but um <laughs> there's just a lot going on but specifically this article is talking about two youtubers who are really upset specifically because they felt that the documentary shiny happy people who did feature them lied to them and i want to get your perspective aaron if you would please just yeah tell us what you think yeah i watched a couple episodes with my wife when it first came out and it was it it you know documented the duggars their show and and then it kind of transitioned into talking more about this IBLP, this Institute in Basic Life Principles, right? Which I had never heard of before, and I found some of their uh, beliefs and practices a little bit a little bit shocking. Mm. And uh, so, I, but I, uh, when we read, after we read this article, I went back and read because I, I didn't remember any mention of any or any YouTube influencers on either of the episodes that I watched. I was like. I didn't know what these people were talking about. So I went back and watched episodes one and four 
And it turns out that the they interviewed some influencers and they were part of a little segment that was about nine minutes long talking about uh, this Christian fundamentalism uh, influencers on, on social media. Mm-hmm. And it didn't really seem to me like it was too much of a quote unquote hit piece against the, the fundamental, the, these, these fundamentalists so much as just kind of using their own words and showing what they believed and what they wanted out of their movement and what they were trying to uh, accomplish. And they tied it into the Institute in basic life principles, IBLP's uh, belief in trying to get one of the reasons they want their members to have so many kids is so they can teach them to, uh, the, they, they kept using the word infiltrate in the documentary. I'm not sure infiltrate was the right word, but the infiltrate the government and other organizations so that they can uh, espouse and get Christian principles and doctrines implemented as laws and policies and things like that. And it, it didn't really seem so much a hit piece so much as just, I think that's sharing what, what they were, what they were, what they believe in, what they were saying. I mean, but doesn't that, that's what infiltrate means, right? Like when you are taking like your ideas, your sensibility, and you're trying to push them into all aspects of society, including government, that's, I guess when, when I somebody says infiltrate, I'm thinking of like spies and oh. double agents and, you know, things like that. But I, it probably is the right word yeah, uh, because, you know, I, I want you to keep your religion out of my government. Please and thank you. Yeah. I want you to keep your your religion out of my schools. Please and thank you very much. And and I say that as someone who wants the same thing, who wanted the same thing back when I was a Christian. Yeah. You know, I we wanted I wanted a secular government. I wanted you know secular schools because having a secular government in schools is the is the way you protect yourself against other religions that you don't believe and you don't share and you don't want any part of. Yeah. Um... I, and I think that that's something that a lot of times Christians who want to blur the lines between state and church or state and religion um, forget to, they don't think about that. Like if you, because like they're saying like, if I basically infiltrate or inflict my beliefs into law, that means that everybody will have to practice their lives according to my belief. But the inverse can happen because you also have government that will possibly make laws that tells you who believes X, Y, and Z that this is the way that you have to do it. So it I don't necessarily- laws to yeah. come effect. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily think that they get that. You know, Tayo, do you think that they get that and why and why not? Uh, no, they don't. <clears throat> I I actually want to talk a little bit about the IBLP. That is this Please. group that I had no idea what it was. So Talk I had about. to Google it. Apparently, it means Institute in Basic Life Principle. That right. these they are this huge Christian organization that is trying to do what you're saying. You know, trying to force people to live the way they want you to live. Uh, they offer seminars and conferences uh, across the USA. And uh, this organization, their teachings emphasize stuff that maybe, just maybe, some of you d might disagree with, such as submission to authority, modesty, purity, hierarchical structure within the family, you know, patriarchy, those things that we kind of spent like centuries fighting, they want them back. Uh, they want, you know, they, they want the traditional family model, which is not in the Bible, by the way. In the Bible, it's just like one guy in um, his slaves. No, they want uh, just mo mo um, not monoparental par parents. They, they're father, mother, and children. That's it. And they want uh, they, they want to force people going to church. And, well, <clears throat> they, they, they cannot be good. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but these type of organizations are never good. Uh, over the years, they have been uh, facing uh, a lot of controversy and criticism. Uh, the most important ones are allegations of abusive practice, practices and harmful teachings that have been raised by former members and critics. And they, those allegations include claims of excessive control. Oh, I, I wonder why. Emotional manipulation, harmful teachings on topics such as abuse, authority, and sexuality. 
And you know what? You see uh, how this works when these guys, these YouTubers that we're talking about, they go and start, um, start using awful arguments saying that people who suffered this, uh, they shouldn't be talking about that. They should just shut up and they should not like attack the, 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 the institution. And they even claim, uh, claim that uh, they are extremists uh, uh, because they are daring to talk against this and that they are not the extremists because they claim that uh, it's perfectly okay to, you know, to, to, uh, to focus on all these awful and harmful ideas. Um, and I want to quote Morgan, uh, Paul and Morgan's uh, overall attitude, uh, according to the article, when it says that the, their attitude towards the survivors of childhood abuse that were interviewed in Shiny Happy Place, they say that uh, despite being supportive people. to them and all of them. Hmm? Shiny Happy Sorry? People. <laughs> what did I say? Place. Oh, really? Oh, shame on me. Sorry. <laughs> no, shiny happy people. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, these guys, <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they say that the problem is that those people, um, uh, they, they strayed from the righteous path and they make it clear that they are very displeased with the fact that many survivors in the series reveal that they have been questioned or, wake, or walked away from their faith. Like, oh yeah, how do you dare walking away from your faith when the people responsible for keeping you in faith have been abusing you? And the last thing that I would say that tells me how disgusting the religion, the harmful religions are, is that instead of trying to understand why they may be, the two guys, are the guys, the YouTubers argue that survivors should disentangle with the views of IBLP to get back in line with the word of God instead of completely des desconstructing and rejecting Christianity. I mean, how sick do you have to be to tell people who have been abused by the church that they should go back to church? That is awful. That that's the most infuriating part about all of this i mean because like i think that one of the other things that when you are really teaching and promoting this hierarchical um system when it comes to man first wife second children under that it also fosters abuse and the reason being is because if you actually take a look at like some of the things that they're teaching, especially if they are really huge on teaching chill girls how to be chaste and oh how God. to dress a certain way. And, you know, because you don't want to invite any type of lewdness or a person may attacking may attack you because you have been you're dressing too uh too sexy your 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 clothing is too revealing but and 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 keep it let's let's keep it a hundred keep it a thousand josh duggar which is the eldest kid in the duggar family is serving time because he sexually abused his sisters but the even more infuriating part is that the uh, the IBLP, the, the Instruction Basic Life Principles, whatever the hell they call themselves, would say, well, that's really terrible what happened to you, Sister Duggars, but how are you dressed? Did you say anything that could possibly entice your brother to actually teach this for them to touch you inappropriately? Did you walk a certain way? Did you look at him with wanting eyes? Did you pray before you walked out of your bedroom when he saw you and attacked you and made them and made him made you do things against your will? And and I and 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 Aaron, I want you to, to chime in, but I just got a quick antidote. I had a conversation with another person about this specifically when it comes to um, sexual assault and when it comes specifically to women and sexual assault and how this whole thing about oh she was dressed a certain way so she was asking for it and I'm like okay well if that's the case then why do why do children get sexually abused why did nuns get sexually abused why did a person who decided that they just wanted to just outright just 
you know, do something to me, even though I was dressed in jeans and, and, and a turtleneck tried to do something to me. I wasn't dressed scantily. You know, I'm just, just, just as an aside, this, I mean, but they, but if a person wants to enforce themselves on you or push themselves on you, it's not because of arousal, it's because of violence. And if you are teaching your children that they, especially girls uh, who grow up to be young women, that they have to look a certain way, be chased a certain way, talk a certain way, because if any man does something to you, it's your fault. This is something that they have to deal with for the rest of their lives. He forced himself upon me, and it's my fault that he did it in the first place. Aaron, what are your thoughts? Yeah, that's a really good point to, to know and remember, is that even though we call it sexual assault, it for the for the uh, perpetrator, it's, it's an act of violence. Right. It's not, it's not about uh, sexual gratification. It's about, it's about violence. And which makes it even more abhorrent when people try to cover up and protect and victim blame uh, people that are, uh, that are survivors of these, of these atrocious uh, acts. And what really, really gets me is, is the hypocrisy of these yeah. people and these organizations where, you know, on Sunday, they're espousing a loving Jesus and a loving God. We should go out and serve and, and help other people and stand up for the poor and the defenseless and the widows. And and yet, uh, behind the scenes, they, they, they support uh, sexual uh, predators yeah. and they don't hold them to account. Yeah. And and they don't and they don't even stand up for their own daughters right. they they minimize their daughter's experience and try to get their sons out of them uh in the in the iblp they knew about it mm -hmm. the leaders of the iblp uh the, the leader i can't remember what his name was but he had many he had up to i think 30 accusations of him improper uh behavior towards women yeah and, and young girls and young girls and mm -hmm what did this organization that was supposedly espousing Christian principles of love and, and help, what did they do? They blamed, they blamed the women yeah. instead of, instead of bl blaming the men, these terrible, horrible, and that's, that's hypocrisy. Yeah. And hypocrisy really needs to be one of the seven deadly sins, because I think it's way more insidious and terrible. A, some to inflict on somebody is to be hypo hip hypocritical hmm. about things because it's so confusing to people that experience it. It's like, well, you're saying one thing, but behaving a different way. I, what's going on? I must be not understanding. I'm, it must be me. It, it just has this tendency to wrap back around around the person experiencing it. And it, it makes them think like, uh, I must be, I must not be faithful enough. I must not understand that. I must, I must, I need to pray more and, and work harder at being, at being Christian because, they, they can't square the hypocrisy, right? They can't, it's really hard to look at when you're in an organization like that and in, it's really hard to look critically, especially when you're taught to be submissive to authority. Yeah. Do you think the same thing, Teo, that, you know, you're, that the uh, critical thinking um, and free thought portion of all of this is missing because of what's being taught? Obviously. And <clears throat> well, as I mentioned before, these the harms of religion are a very evident on these people. Uh, I want to mention really quickly about the four main people that we that we had to read uh, about in the in the article. Clark mm -hmm. and Bill, they are part of one show, and Paul and Morgan are part of another one. But both groups of people or couple of people, they basically do the same. They instruct people, I don't know, women, how to dress modestly. They engage in victim blaming. They spend a lot of time and energy demonizing the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, they blame mental illness on a lack of faith in God. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how harmful that is for, the, for people with mental illnesses? Uh, they use their platform to advocate for homeschooling in the classical Christian way. And even though, and they attack other people who are not devout enough. And they do want to distance themselves from the from the documentary and the behavior of the of shiny happy people apparently, 
but their content is actually the same thing that shiny happy people did it's basically the same and they are trying to brainwash people into this same harmful behavior and uh, for me it's it's quite sad i mean obviously this is everything that we fight against we fight against um uh, against misinformation we fight mm. against people trying to take rights away from others and they are kind of our opposite <laughs> the evil part the, the evil counterpart where they want people brainwashed they want to stop people from getting rights they want to stop people from thinking on their own and this is where the part that aaron aaron uh, said uh, takes a huge and important part they want to raise critical thinking from people and they want people to just follow order just be obedient and that's it i started checking one of those videos from here and the, literally the first part of that uh, of, uh, of this guy was him saying oh yeah you don't want us to tell you how to live your life well you have to decide because somebody's deciding for you it's either you deciding on your own or the lord telling through us what you have to do and, and it's like dude what the heck is wrong with you it's like no this is all about our own freedom and you cannot just go and try to brainwash people and tell them what to do and yeah you have the truth because they're your imaginary friends telling you how to Ugh, it makes me you angry. have you have to listen to the lord talking through me that mm. is incredible i just want to just bring up one more thing about the iblp and especially they're pushing for homeschooling you know around when they started when the schools were being integrated okay that's got to be a coincidence right is it <laughs> <laughs> is it but you know what's not a coincidence What's not a coincidence that if you want to listen to more of the nonprofits, you should click here. <laughs>